Hello, everybody. Welcome to today's vlog. I have a really fabulous guest who's going to share something really exciting at the end today about uh, an event that she's going to be having in 2018. Um, my guest is Jill Hendrickson, and she is a writing coach. And I'm actually going to let you take it, Jill, and tell us more about you and how you got into this and what you do. Oh, well, please feel free to jump in at any point. So, um, yes, I'm Jill Hendrickson, and I'm a former journalist and a best-selling author. And I'm the founder of the Bali Triple Goddess Magic Writing Journey. Yay! <laughs> yeah, I take women to this gorgeous island of Bali, the, the island of the gods and the goddesses, where they can do their writing and get back to their self because as we know in this digital world it can get kind of crazy and if you're not really in touch with your essence you can really like go off the rails and that isn't good for your business or your health so um this all started because i was a journalist overseas my i just love to travel just because of it's exciting and just all the, the things that it can do for you. You see a new way of being and living. And I had been working as a reporter in Washington, D.C. I got a job on a newspaper in Japan, and that was my dream. And I started climbing that journalistic ladder, and it was the perfect place for it because I was able, you know, so many different news organizations are gathered there, and, and I could go you know, I worked for the Associated Press, I worked for Japan's National News Service on TV and radio. And then at some point, you know, you've, maybe you've heard that saying, what if you climb the ladder of life and find that it's been leaning against the wrong building? And I started to feel this inner void and I realized that the news business wasn't where it was at for me. I loved what it taught me. I loved the experience of writing all the time and making my living writing. I loved the experience of being forced to write quickly and concisely. So there were many things that I appreciated about that. And certainly being a roving reporter was more fun than just being stuck in an office all the time. So I loved my job in certain respects. But I do remember one time when I was sitting in the hot seat editing all the incoming stories about an airplane that had gone down in the ocean and all the people had died. And I had to edit these reports of body parts washing up on the shores of Japan. And it was just so horrifying to me. And I realized that the news business was maybe just a little bit too harsh for me. And I wanted to explore my inner being. I wanted to explore my creativity from a different angle and not just be the messenger for other people about their story, but I wanted to explore some things within myself. And I came to the conclusion that, you know, I really did want to write books because I read very widely and I, that was just something that I wanted to explore and I felt this deep longing for that. So um, it was a huge decision to make that big shift. It meant um, giving up my job. It meant I, <clears throat> I pretty much decided by that time that it was time to leave Japan. So I was going to have to give up my life there. Had a bunch of friends there. I had a Japanese boyfriend. And so I, I did quit my job and decided I was going to focus on writing. What happened in the meantime is, you know how sometimes when you finally make a decision that's taken you a while and is difficult, everything starts coming to you. Yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> all the opportunities that have been waiting there. So just before I left that country, I mean, right on the cusp of it, I met the man of my dreams and he was an American working over there as a journalist. I ended up leaving. And so we had this international romance going on that became very expensive. And so we finally decided to get married. I did move back there. He, cha he changed jobs and went into finance. And so we had this fabulous life of international travel and just, you know, it was so amazing in so many respects. But it had a 
gory underside because he turned out to be an abuser. Oh. So I found myself in this horrific situation of um, not even knowing really what that was. You know, I don't know. I, this happens to a lot of women, but it can be so um, disturbing that you don't really even realize what's going on. So I didn't know if it was me or if it was him. And I was probably suppressing things and denying it. Meantime, I'm trying to write. And we eventually, uh, we moved to New York. But before that happened, I had this unexpected spiritual experience in Tokyo. It was a massive um, spiritual awakening. It happened through an Indian master who happened to be a woman of all things. And it totally changed my life. It was one of these like out of body experiences, indescribable. <laughs> but when I came back, it was almost as though I was seeing clearly for the first time. And it was like, I had been viewing the world through mosquito netting and all of a sudden stuff started to become clear. But I still had to get myself out of this situation. So long story short, at some point, um, this is seven years into that very difficult marriage. My husband came home one evening, picked another fight with me, and in the process, picked up a Chinese vase, hurled it, it went whizzing past my head, smashed against the wall behind me. And I was absolutely terrified because I knew by this point something had to change. I, I had chronic fatigue, fibromyalgia, and unbeknownst to me, PTSD at the time. And that made it very difficult to leave that marriage, even though I knew that I had to. So I, I had been on the fence for a long, long time. But when I saw him go to the kitchen, I was afraid that he was going to, quote unquote, get the knives as he had threatened. Oh. And suddenly, I knew that it was either change or die, because I really knew that I might die in that apartment that night. And so I ran for my life. There was only one exit from that apartment. And I had to go past the kitchen, got out the front door, ran down 14 flights of steps because I was afraid of getting trapped in the elevator. And at the, when I got to the bottom floor, I asked the doorman, please call the police. And he did. And this time they came and they arrested my husband. Wow. Up until that time, basically they would just walk a guy like that around the block and send him home. But about a week before that, a socialite had been murdered in New York. And so they were starting to take it seriously. He was jailed. So he was out of the house, but he wasn't out of my life. And there, from that point, then I got involved in a seven year legal battle to try to get away from him, get a divorce and start my life over. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So I was very terrified of going on the witness stand because he'd hired one of New York's nastiest law firms and it's very nastiest lawyer. And I knew that they were going to try to slaughter me. They did things like they had tried to confiscate a novel I was writing to, you know, <laughs> just anything to make me back down, you know, to, to humiliate me. I guess they were going to go through it to see if it was worthy of me having spent time writing it or whether they could claim money from it if it became a bestseller. They were trying to um, subpoena old boyfriends, trying to subpoena, but this time I'd gotten into a writing program at Columbia University. They were trying to subpoena my teachers and have them come to the trial, thinking that I was going to back down. And I didn't. I just couldn't. I could not let him get away with this. And so finally, when I had my day in court and was on that witness stand, and told my story in all of its raw and gory detail. <laughs> and the judge believed me and awarded in my favor. Then I really understood how important it was to stand up and tell your story and have a powerful message that you just do not back down from. You don't water it down. That is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you know what? I, you and I didn't discuss this before, but my very first novel, I actually killed my ex-husband in it. And I did it because I'm blonde, just like you. Felony orange is not my color. 
I could not <laughs> spend the rest of my life in prison. Maybe <laughs> if the uniforms had been royal blue, would have been a different story, but yeah. I killed mine with a baseball bat. Oh, so, great. You have it. <laughs> Congratulations. That is the beauty, right, of being able to be a writer. You can run the show. You can kill people off. You can bring them back to life. You can do what you want. You get to play goddess. <laughs> there you, you do, do. And the amazing part of that was is how cathartic it was. Yes. Yeah, because I had one of those, too, that not he didn't hurt me in any way, you know, physically, but really not a great dude. And so every trick in the book and really had control issues. So it was really cool. But everybody, I lived in a smaller town. Everybody was like, you killed your ex-husband, didn't you? And I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not telling. <laughs> but isn't that amazing that it's almost like your own inner being, your, your inner healer was showing you how to heal yourself and get yes, back. Yes, exactly. You're right about that. I didn't think about that. I hadn't thought about that before, but yeah, there was like, you know, and, and you wouldn't even believe how many times I wrote that part where, you know, I hit him with that bat. And, you know, like the, the fake teeth coming out and the head, you know, like I wrote and rewrote that graphically. <laughs> oh, I've got to read this. <laughs> no, it's actually a horrible book. I'm a horrible writer, but I'm a great storyteller. So, um, you, you know, you have to know your limitations, right? <laughs> yeah, but congratulations. I salute you for writing this. <laughs> Well, thank you. So that's how you got into helping other women, it sounds like. Yeah, it is. And so what happened after that was that um, I felt that I had suffered so much that I promised myself that I was going to live the rest of my life doing what I wanted to do. I knew I wanted to write books. So one of the first things that I did was I went back to India to be with that spiritual master because I wanted to wanted to be there. It's one of my favorite places in the world, but I also wanted to thank her for the inner and the outer help that I got through that ordeal. It was at her ashram that I first became introduced to the yogic goddesses, the power goddesses, and those were very important on my path and helping me get through this. And then I also, when I was on that trip, when I left India, I was sitting in a hotel in Singapore and I just remember, I was like looking at some brochures and I, I saw Bali was like, at that time it was going to cost like $200 to fly there. And I thought, oh, why not? I'm in this corner of the world. And I knew from being there that I eventually wanted to have a women's writing retreat in Bali. It took me something like 15 years to actually make it happen. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, but I finally did. And then in the meantime... I also, because I promised myself just to start living my dreams, I went to Italy uh, because I had a lifelong dream of wanting to study Italian. And because I followed that passion, I ended up living in a palazzo with a cooking teacher. And that became the basis of my first book that ever came out in print, which was Weight Loss Italian Style. So which, wait, which, wait, 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 wait. Did you just like eat, pray, love backwards? Uh, kind of, yeah. And it was about <laughs> 10 years before that. <laughs> Totally. I mean, when I saw that movie, my jaw dropped. <laughs> New York divorce, Italy, India, Bali. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, how dare Elizabeth Gilbert steal your story? <laughs> have you well, great minds work alike, you know. Have, have you ever read Big Magic? No, you know, I haven't. So uh, there's a concept in that book that I love about if you don't act on an idea, somebody else will steal it. She said uh, her idea. <laughs> I didn't act fast enough. I didn't have the self-confidence to act fast enough on it. So there's a lesson right there. <laughs> but the thing was, what happened from that is I, I wrote that book because I love Italy. It's one of my power places. I love Italy, Bali, India, and New York also, but, and, and Japan too. Um, but I, I wanted to tap into the, the beauty, the pleasure, the food, the love that I basically had my own renaissance when I went to Italy and allowed myself to have all that. And love came back into my life. 
So I wrote that book. And then what I found was, oh, da, 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 and I'm sure you know a lot about this. Um, you can't just write a book and expect that that's going to like, yeah, you know, <laughs> all the money's going to roll in. And for the rest of your life, you're just going to continue to write books. Now, if your st name is Stephen King, yeah, you could maybe do that. But I was awoken to the harsh reality that of the marketing aspect of everything. And, and through that experience, I also realized that it wasn't really weight loss that I wanted to focus on. It was more about re-enlivening your life and coming back to life, that whole thing. And so I had to kind of shift my focus, but I continued to write and continued to try to learn about marketing also. And then that led to, well, you need to go out and speak. So went down that road and I started finding that everything that I learned about marketing, there was more to learn. And then there was more to learn. And it was like, it, if anytime I stuck my toe into something, this whole new rabbit hole would open up and I'd fall into that. And then I'd meet somebody that said, no, but you have to do this too. And it became very confusing. Mm -hmm. And at some point I had to look around and I went, am I a writer or am I a marker? Cause I'm not really doing my writing anymore. And I wasn't really enjoying it. So, um, when, when I really felt myself going crazy over the whole thing was around the point when I decided, you know, I really have to put this, this Bali writing retreat together because that totally brought me back to me and what I loved. And I got very excited about it, which is always a good sign. Right. Yeah. And, and finally put that together one of the things that had been holding me back was here I am sitting in California. It's literally the other side of the world. How was I going to pull that together? But I, but I ended up doing it. It was a fabulous experience. What I love about it is I was able to pull together the writing, having a space where women could get away from their ordinary life, get away from their distractions, Get away from the, if it's a, a partner, the kids, the, the pets, the phone, all those things. And, and go to a place in the world where that isn't such a burden on you because it's not as advanced in that respect at this point. Mm -hmm. And it's also a place that I have actually never been anywhere in the world that was that exotic. And I've been a lot of places. And it's a very spiritual place. It, spirituality is interwoven with everything in everyday life there. It's not like you live your life and your business and then you go to church on Sunday. It's, it's an everyday, it's in every aspect of life. And it also is like the, the home, the stomping grounds of the goddesses who are still worshipped there. So that was really fabulous for me. And I wanted to introduce women to that. Mm -hmm. Not as a different religion, because it's not. It, the goddesses represent, depending on how you want to look at them, they represent different energies or different powers that we all have within ourselves. But as women, especially if you're living in the West, nobody really talks about that, that much. It's not part of our upbringing. And so my experience was that I was missing out on like a huge, huge access to different powers, including wisdom, wealth, and just raw power. And so I really wanted to introduce women to that. They loved it and I want to do more of it. And it's also just a perfect setting for going deeper, discovering more about yourself, which helps you to find your real message. Because one of the things that I had struggled with that made it hard for me to really get traction in my business is I wasn't clear on my message. Mm -hmm. And Part of that was that, you know, it's not a mechanical thing. You can't just, at least what I found from my own experience, I couldn't just look at the world and go, well, what do people want? What do I have to offer? And then offer that because it's a little bit, um, a lot of people are doing that. And then for one thing, you don't separate yourself from the crowd. And two, if it's not the thing that's bubbling up in your heart from within who you really are at some point it's not going to work there's going to be a disconnect there'll be a disconnect within yourself and so you probably get bored with it and or it's just never going to land or 
what I found was um, I just wasn't that excited about going and sharing the messages that weren't really me and I didn't know what the problem was. Mm -hmm. And then you'll be disconnected from your audience because they're going to feel that. They'll feel that it's not real, it's not grounded. Yeah, no, and, and you know what? That, I think that's probably the biggest mistake people make before going into a book is they're not connecting with their ideal audience in advance. They're, they're writing the wrong book. They don't really know what it is these people want and need. They're, you know, they're writing from a place of what they think they would want and need or what they did want and need versus actually connecting with that audience and finding out what it is that they mm -hmm. want. Um, I met with a young lady this weekend. She is a, she's brilliant. She truly is brilliant, but she's engineer brilliant. And so she's written this whole book. And then this weekend when I talked to her, she said, I've got to rewrite the whole book because I've decided that my ideal audience is this profession. And I was thinking, oh my gosh, it's taken you a year to write that book. And now she's just starting to market. So now she's starting to connect with those people. And the amount of money that she's going to have to put into that because it's already been edited. <gasps> Yeah, I know, I know people don't, they don't think about these things. You know, when you build that platform and you're in the midst of writing the book, you have an avenue to start changing the direction. Once it's done and edited, it's like, whoa, I've been marketing a bit. It's expensive. Yeah. Yeah. I, and I think that's the biggest mistake that writers do is not having that message and that audience connected in before. They take this. Yeah, off. exactly. And that's part of what happened to me when I wrote Weight Loss Italian Style. I still love that book. I, I loved being able to write it and get all those things out of myself and out into the world too. And I still believe in it, but it wasn't really on target. And so, yeah, I had to shift. And it wasn't the only shift that I went through either. This, this kind of happened a couple of times. And so, yeah, it's really important. You can waste a lot of time and energy and money, and right? Money, especially the money on marketing. You were mentioning that you, you kept getting deeper and deeper into it. Um, I was just on the phone with someone who's another marketing expert, and, and we were talking about how um, the market shifts all the time. The consumer, yeah. the consumer gets savvy, and if you're doing like 2015 called and they want their, their digital marketing back, you're in trouble. Because yeah. It, you know, even within this last year, the market has, has shifted a little bit in, in their response to some digital platforming that's been working for years. So I can see why you would have gotten really like, what more? And, and it's hard and it, it, I can, it, it does suck your passion away if you don't really know what you're doing. Yeah. And you can spend all your time chasing that and then you're not even doing your passion anymore. Yeah, exactly. And, and, you know, you, you also hit on something that what I was finding or one of the things that I was finding was that something would come to me this, that whatever the market shift was, I would find out about it around the time that the big people had left it behind and were going on to the next thing. So it didn't really work that well. Yeah. That's what we were just talking about in the call, the call before you was that, um, you know, this market shift has taken place and people are coming to us and saying, well, that sounds like a lot of work to have to do it this way. Why can't I do it that way? And it's because that way isn't working anymore. These guys are, you know, ahead and they're figuring out. So yeah, it's, it's tough. You really have to, I, I recommend that people really get a built for you model. It's going to be expensive, but it's someone who is, up on what's working today instead of you know let's let's go back to whatever year <laughs> so, something cut, something cut out right there i wanted to, what did you call it what kind of model did you call it uh which model wait a minute, what did i just say oh you said it a uh, something a uh, something, oh, something. Uh, i i prefer when i sell to sell people a built for you model because that way we get all the cutting edge stuff in and it's just not it's not piecemeal together with, with uh, the piecemeal is, is a killer. Yeah. It Cause there's all, if you do it that way, there's always a piece that's missing. Mm -hmm. Right. There it, <laughs> is. it definitely is. So I want to hear about the Bali event before we sign off here. And who's, who's the perfect person for you for that Bali event? Who's that ideal client that just soars 
in, in that sort of environment? It's a woman that wants to write. She feels called to write. Whether it's, you know, that just that deep longing that they have something that they want to get down on paper. Generally, there's a message to share, whether it's from their personal experience or whether it's something that's going to help them with the book that they're writing for their business. But even in that case, their personal story is going to be in there somewhere. And the message tends to arise somewhere from inside their personal story. It's, it's a woman who either deep down or on the surface, like for me on the surface, yes, I'm an adventurous person. I love to travel, but it may be a woman that hasn't done international travel, but there is a longing in her to see something different, to see something exotic, to, to experience something that's so mind blowingly exotic. And in the process to discover or rediscover her feminine power and be in an environment that supports that. It's a lush, beautiful, feminine, curvy, tropical environment with so much beauty. And a woman that it'll really be great for is somebody who wants to be eating fresh foods. <laughs> Because it, this is a tropical place with delicious fruits and fresh vegetables. Um, a woman that can enjoy healing. We go to a healer there who's um, a member of the Balinese royal family. He does traditional healing. It's not like anything you've ever experienced here. And also a woman that would enjoy spa experiences. Bali is incredible for that because all of that stuff contributes to you being able to write more freely uh, without, you know, without the guilt that you're taking time off, without the time constraints of having so many different things to do because you're not going to have a lot of things to do there. You're in a retreat environment and that's all you have to do is be present. So. Oh, that sounds amazing. I have to tell you guys, I went to France this summer and I didn't take anything but my phone just because the kids, you know, had to have a way to get a hold of me. It was invigorating. I mean, it, it was just amazing. I don't think we remember how much stress all this technology creates for us. It was, I, mean, I came home so happy. I didn't have to look at my computer. Or I didn't have appointments. I did. I mean, it was amazing. I can just picture this being like that, only better <laughs> in that environment. So how the whole, yeah. So how do these guys find you? I was just gonna how do they find out more about this event? Yeah, the best thing, so my website is jillhendrickson.com. And I also have a page that describes Bali. Right now, I don't have the new dates on it, but the dates for the next retreat are going to be May 20 through the 26th of 2018. Now, if you want to go and look at the, the, the page that describes everything, I'm sorry that it doesn't have the May dates on it, but you can go to Bali Magic Writing Journey, and it will walk you through everything. You'll see gorgeous pictures of... Bali and the retreat site. It's really amazing. But the whole concept of unplugging is so important. And I'll just share with you that when I was there one time, I lost my ability to even send and receive emails. It wasn't Bali's problem. It wasn't because I was in that country. It had to do with my server. But I started freaking out and panicky because can you imagine suddenly not being able to access your email? And then at some point I just had to surrender because there was nothing I could do about it. And after a while, it was like, I really started enjoying that. And I loved it. It was so amazing not to even have the ability to go online. And so, yeah, I can totally relate to your French experience. We need to do that. It's very replenishing and it gives you that chance to refuel when you're not in that distracted frantic state anymore yeah and no. short of going to prison there's <laughs> no other way to do it <laughs> i don't know there's lots of things you can sneak in prison from what i just know that from reading i've not personal experience so <laughs> 
<laughs> well, I imagine it's more enjoyable to go to Bali than to go to prison. Okay, I think that's I think that's watching too much is what is it? Black is the new orange, orange is the new black. <laughs> Jill, thank you so much for being on today. It's really tremendous. And um, thank you. It posts that page on Freebie Friday so that um, inside the platform building group, I think you're a part of that as well. Uh, start posting the page so people who see this will, will, will start preparing for setting their intentions for 2018 um, that they want. Thank to you. Yes. All right. Yes. And I, okay. Thank you so much. No, go ahead. Did you have something else? Yo, oh, I was just going to say, I forgot to give my um, email address. It's info at jillhendrickson.com. But if people do want to go to my website, jillhendrickson.com, they can actually get um, something that I wrote up for them about how having the right message can help you write your book, your talk, and even host your own retreat if that's what you want to do. Oh, that is so cool. So if they go to your website, spell Hendrickson for them real quick. Yeah. H E N. D R I C K S O N O N. Okay, cool. So go to her site and get that free gift, that download. That is cool information about events because I think a lot of us out there are really scared to have events because it's a lot of work. I can't even imagine you do this in another country. <laughs> in my own backyard when I plan an event, it's it's difficult to bring everything together. So thank you so much for being on today. My pleasure. Thank you.